Miss Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I'm so excited that you're joining me today for Alphabet Adventures, our fun virtual story time series where every week we talk about a different letter in the alphabet. So let's see, do you remember all the letters we've already talked about? We talked about A and B and C and D and E and F. Hmm, wonder what letter we're going to talk about today. But before we can figure that out, we got to get all those wiggles out. So I hope you'll join me and Mr. Monkey in singing our hello song. We're going to start by waving our arms nice and big. But be careful. Don't bonk the person sitting next to you if you're close to a friend or a family member. Are you ready? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? That was wonderful. Let's clap our hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hello, everybody, and clap your hands. Clap your hands today. Terrific! Let's stomp our feet. Hello, everybody, and stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. Stomp your feet. Hello, everybody, and stomp your feet. Stomp your feet today. That was great. Good job. Now, though, let's make it a little more challenging. Do you think we can stomp our feet super fast? You do. Mr. Monkey does. Let's try it on the count of three. Ready? One. Two, three, fast! Oh, freeze! Oh, that was so fast, I fell backwards in my chair. So now, friends, let's do the opposite of fast. Hmm, what is the opposite of fast? You're right, you're so smart. Let's do it. Solo stomping. <laughs> Very good. And now, friends, let's try stomping our feet big and loud. You want to? All right, let's, last time we counted up to three. This time let's count down from three. Ready? Three, two, one. Big and loud! Oh, oh freeze. Whew, that was really good, really big, and really loud. So now, friends, let's do the opposite. What is the opposite of big and loud? Hmm. Right again. Small. So let's do some tip-toe stomping. Very good. And now our bodies are ready for stories. But before we can do that, we have to figure out what the letter of the day is. Mr. Monkey, can you please go get your mystery bag? Inside Mr. Monkey's mystery bag are different objects that all begin with the letter of the day. So let's see if we can figure out what it is. What do you have in there? Oh, what's this creature? Oh, come on out. Don't be shy. Oh, do you know what this is? This is a giraffe. Giraffe. Have you ever seen a giraffe at the zoo? They have really, really long necks. Can you stretch your neck like a giraffe? Oh, good job. Hmm, giraffe. Wonder what letter giraffe starts with. Oh, what else is in here? Ooh, something yummy. Do you know what this is? These are grapes. Now, these are purple grapes, but there are also green grapes out there in the world. Hmm. Do you like grapes? Me too, Mr. Monkey. I do too. Hmm. Grapes. I wonder what letter that starts with. Oh, oh we got another big one in here. Come on out. Oh, my goodness. Can you tell what this guy is? Oh. There he is. He was feeling a little shy. He's a gorilla. <laughs> gorilla. Hmm. What letter does gorilla start with? Oh. oh, and there's one more thing in here. Oh, these are silly. Do you know what these are? These are glasses. Now, these ones are sunglasses, and they're silly sunglasses at that. Do you wear glasses or know someone who does? Me too. Hmm. Glasses. So let's see. We had 
glasses, and grapes, a gorilla, and a giraffe. Have you figured out our letter yet? <gasps> our letter of the day is G. G for a gorilla eating grapes. And look, he has green grapes. Green also starts with the letter G. There are many, many great words that start with the letter G. Can you think of any? So we already mentioned green. I'm wearing some green today. But what else starts with G? Goat and goose and giant gum, gum drops, gingerbread, grass. Hmm. Go, go, go. Hmm. Can you think of any more? There are many, many great words that start with the letter G. The letter G can have a hard sound or a soft sound, depending on what other letters are next to it in the word. So in the word grapes, it has a hard sound like g, g, grapes. Can you try that with me? G, g, grapes. G, g, grapes. Very good. But when it comes to our friend the giraffe, come back over here, my shy friend. It has a softer sound that almost sounds like the letter J. Giraffe. J, j, giraffe. Can you try it with me? J, j, giraffe. Very good. How about with glasses? Is that a hard sound or a soft sound? That's right, it has the hard sound. G, g, glasses. G, g, glasses. And what about our friend the gorilla? Do you think that is a hard sound or a soft sound? Yep, another hard one. G, g, gorilla. G, g, gorilla. Very good, my friends. So all of our stories and songs today will feature the letter G. Our first story today features a goat named Gregory, another fun G word, who doesn't want to eat the things that goats eat. He wants to eat some good food. Good, another G word. This is Gregory the Terrible Eater, written by Mitchell Sharma, illustrated by Jose Arrego and Ariane Dewey, and read today with permission of Simon & Schuster Publishing. <gasps> There's Gregory frolicking around. Once there was a goat named Gregory. Gregory liked to jump from rock to rock, kick his legs into the air, and butt his head against walls. I'm an average goat, said Gregory. But Gregory was not an average goat. Gregory was a terrible eater. Every time he sat down to eat with his mother and father, he knew he was in trouble. Looks like they're going to have a picnic. Would you like a tin can, Gregory? Asked Mother Goat. No, thanks, said Gregory. How about a nice box, a piece of rug, or a bottle cap? Asked Father Goat. Bah, said Gregory unhappily. Well, I think this is a meal fit for a goat, said Mother Goat, as she chewed on an old shoe. Oh, it certainly is, said Father Goat, as he ate a shirt, buttons and all. I don't know why you're such a fussy eater, Gregory. I'm not fussy, said Gregory. I just I just want fruits and vegetables, eggs, fish, bread, and butter. You know, good stuff like that. Mother Goat stopped eating the shoe. Now, what kind of food is that, Gregory? She said. It's what I like, said Gregory. Oh, it's revolting, said Father Goat. And he wiped his mouth with his napkin. After Gregory was excused from the table, Father Goat said, Gregory is such a terrible eater. I wonder what's wrong with him, said Mother Goat. Mother and Father Goat ate their evening newspaper in silence. The next morning, Mother and Father Goat were enjoying a pair of pants and a coat for breakfast, and Gregory came to the table. Good morning, Gregory, said Father and Mother Goat. 
Good morning, said Gregory. May I have some orange juice, cereal, and bananas for breakfast, please? Oh, oh no, Mother Goat said. Do have some of this nice coat. Take a bite out of these pants, said Father Goat. Bah, said Gregory, and he left the table. Father Goat threw down his napkin. That does it, he said. Gregory just isn't eating right. We must take him to the doctor. Well, Father and Mother Goat took Gregory to the doctor. Dr. Ram was munching on a few pieces of cardboard. What seems to be the trouble? he asked. Oh, Gregory is a terrible eater, said Mother Goat. We've offered him the best. Shoes, boxes, magazines, tin cans, coats, pants, but, but all he wants are fruit and vegetables, eggs, fish, orange juice, and other horrible things. Hmm. What do you have to say about all this, Gregory? asked Dr. Ram. I want what I like, said Gregory. Makes sense, said Dr. Ram. He turned to Mother and Father Goat. I've treated picky eaters before, he said. They have to develop a taste for good food slowly. Try giving Gregory one new food each day until he eats everything. That night for dinner, Mother Goat gave Gregory spaghetti and a shoelace and tomato sauce. Not too bad, said Gregory. The next day she gave him string beans and a rubber heel cut into small pieces. That meal was good and rubbery said Gregory. The day after that, Mother Goat said, We have your favorite today, vegetable soup, but there is one condition. You also have to eat the can. Oh, okay, said Gregory. That's for dessert. Ice cream, said Father Goat, but you have to eat the box too. Ooh, yummy, said Gregory. Oh, I'm proud of you, said Father Goat. You're beginning to eat like a goat. I'm learning to like everything, said Gregory. One evening, Father Goat asked, Has anyone seen my striped necktie? Oh, not since breakfast, said Mother Goat. Come to think of it, I, I haven't seen my sewing basket today. I, I left it in the living room after supper last night. Father Goat turned to Gregory. Gregory, have you been eating between meals? Yeah, said Gregory. I, I can't help it. Now I like everything. Well, said Mother Goat, it's all right to eat like a goat, but you shouldn't eat like a pig. Oh, said Gregory. After Gregory went to bed, Mother Goat said, I'm afraid Gregory will eat my clothes hamper. Yes, and then my toolkit will be next, said Father Goat. He's eating too much. We'll have to do something about it. The next evening, just before supper, Mother and Father Goat went to the town dump. Of junk, huh? They brought home eight flat tires, a three foot piece of barber pole, a broken violin, and half a car. They piled everything in front of Gregory's sandbox. When Ge Gregory came home for supper, he said, What's all that stuff in the yard? Your supper, said Father Goat. Oh, it all looks good, said Gregory. Gregory ate the tires and the violin, and then he slowly ate the barber pole, but when he started in on the car, he said, Oh, I've got a stomach ache. I, I have to lie down. Gregory went to his room. I think Gregory ate too much junk, said Father Goat. Let's hope so, said Mother Goat. All night Gregory tossed and twisted and moaned and groaned. And the next morning he went down for breakfast. What would you like for breakfast today, Gregory? asked Father Goat. Scrambled eggs and two pieces of wax paper and a glass of orange juice, said Gregory. Oh, well that sounds just about right, said Mother Goat. And it was. Next, friends, we are going to sing a fun song about gum. Sticky, sticky, bubble gum. Gum starts with a G. So first I want you to pretend that you have a piece of bubble gum. Hmm. What color is yours? Mine's pink. Let's put it in our mouths and chew really big. Ready? Mmm. Oh, part of stuck our bubble gum, huh, friend? Mmm. Well, now we got a little, a really big bubble. 
Ready? <gasps> oh no! Our bubbles popped and now we have icky sticky bubble gum all over our hands. Ugh. Oh no, my hands are stuck together. All right, now friends, we are going to sing our song and pretend that this bubble gum that is stuck in our hands gets stuck in some silly places. So I hope you'll join me in singing. Are you ready? Icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum, bubble gum, bubble gum. Icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum sticking to my head. <gasps> Oh no! All right, on the count of three, let's pull it off. You ready? One, two, three. Oh! oh no, it's stuck to my hands again. Let's sing again. Icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum, bubble gum, bubble gum. Icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum sticking to my face. Oh no. No, I have sticky bubble gum on my face. Oh dear. All right, let's pull it off on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Ugh. Oh my. Still very sticky. Let's try it one more time. Ready, friends? Icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum, bubble gum. Bubble gum, icky, sticky, sticky, sticky bubble gum sticking to my arms. Oh dear. Well, this is going to be a hard one to pull off. Let's try it on the count of three. You ready? One, two, three. Oh. Ooh, better wash our hands. Very good, friends. And that's such a fun song and I bet it gets stuck in your head. And you can think of other places for your pretend icky sticky bubble gum to stick. Just make sure to take it off when you're done singing and wash those hands. <laughs> and now let's read another story. This is one of my all time favorite stories, so I really hope you enjoy it. This is Giraffes Can't Dance, written by Giles Andre, illustrated by Guy Parker Reese, and read today with permission of Scholastic Press. <gasps> There's some warthogs dancing. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, oh no, he buckled at the knees. Poor Gerald. Now, every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it comes to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, 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 look at clumsy Gerald! The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool! Oh, Gerald, you're so weird! Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm, I'm useless. I. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He had never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. And he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. Oh, the moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. 
Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on, but sometimes when you're different, you just need a, a different song. See our cricket up there. Listen to the swaying grass and, and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is the branches and the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing around. He threw his arms out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up into the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I am dancing! Yes, I'm dancing! I am dancing! Gerald cried. Then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him, quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How'd you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. So friends, every week during our Alphabet Adventures story time, we've been learning how to do a different letter in American Sign Language. And this week, I'd like to teach you how to make the letter G. You're gonna take your dominant hand, which again for me is my right, but for you it might be your left, and you're gonna curl up your bottom three fingers, leaving your pointer finger, your index finger, and your thumb out. Then you're going to kind of parallel them, make them look like they're pinching, but hold it out like this. This is a G. 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 Do you remember how to do our other letters? We have A, which is a fist, B, with our fingers straight and our hand, thumb across, C, that looks like a C, D, that kind of looks like a D, E, which kind of in a way looks like a scrunched up E, F, with our fingers out like this, and now, G. Very good. Now let's review all 26 letters in the alphabet by singing the ABC song. And if you'd like, you can clap the beat, you can tap the beat, you can stomp the beat, or you can dance the beat. Like Gerald the giraffe. I think I might dance this week. Let's sing. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Good singing, friends. Well, friends, we've reached the end of another Alphabet Adventures virtual story time. Before we go, I'd like to remind you that the library is now open for browsing appointments. So if you'd like to come in to pick out your own library materials, you can do so. Give us a call at 412-655-2424 to make an appointment. If you're not comfortable coming in, that's okay. We're still doing curbside and we would love to pull materials for you. Before we leave today, we gotta sing our goodbye song. So we need to look around and find someone or something to hug. And I hope you'll join me in singing the more we get together. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Bye, friends. See you next time. I wonder what letter we'll talk about then. Bye.